It was a mistake they are never going to live down. Harry and Meghan thought they were making a good choice when they agreed to do a sit-down interview with Oprah Winfrey back in 2021 and trash the royal family. But now, almost three years later, it's clear that was a mistake that will haunt them for the rest of their lives. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. I do believe that growing up as a prince, Harry was taught to be careful with his words, to be careful with what he revealed about himself, about his family. Harry also had the help of the palace PR people who are very good at their jobs. They were the ones who helped him cover up all his mistakes, all his bad behavior. And you know, growing up, Harry did end up in the headlines a lot, but he claims he didn't want that attention, that instead he was just trying to live his life as a young man. And on some level, I do believe him. I mean, I believe that especially after the trauma that Harry experienced when he was a young boy, it was natural that he was going to go through a wild phase. He was out partying, he would be falling out of nightclubs. But Harry was forgiven for all this, because remember, that was part of his persona. He was the cheeky chappy prince who was happy and fun-loving. Perhaps a little naughty at times, but it was part of his charm, really. But even through all that, Harry really remembered the family's mantra of never complain, never explain. He didn't have a habit of trying to explain away everything and trying to get more attention for himself after articles about him were published. But then entered Meghan Markle, and everything changed. All of a sudden, Harry became desperate to share his side of the story. Meghan, remember, it helped him understand that he had been suffering from genetic pain, as he called it, that his father had passed down to him as a result of the way his father was raised. Of course, we know that's a big steaming pile of BS, but Harry believed Meghan's every word. And the culmination of Meghan's influence on Harry really came in the Oprah Winfrey interview in 2021, if not later in spare. That Oprah Winfrey interview was shocking, no doubt about it, because that was really the first time that we had heard Harry and Meghan share their side of the story, or as they put it, try to take back the narrative. That interview contained so many completely made up stories, so many exaggerations, and so many unfounded claims. And many of these unfounded claims are still being discussed in the media today. The biggest one, of course, is that two members, or rather in that interview, Megan said it was one member, one member of the royal family, had expressed concerns about how dark artificial skin color might turn out to be while she was pregnant. And then Harry, of course, said, no, the conversations happened when they first started dating. But whatever, the damage was already done. For years now, people have been speculating about who that member of the family could possibly be. And then, of course, in November, thanks to Omid Scobie's book Endgame, we finally got the name. Well, we discovered, actually, it was two names. Supposedly, King Charles and Princess Catherine had said something untoward about Prince Artificial's skin color before he was born. Do we believe it? Well, absolutely not. But Meghan was hoping it was going to be a bomb that was going to destroy the royal family. Of course, it didn't. Nobody believed anything that was written in Endgame because it was written by Meghan and Harry's cheerleader, Omid Scobie, a.k.a. Scabies, a.k.a. Scooby-Doo-Doo. Since then, there has been radio silence from both Buckingham Palace and Meghan Markle on the claims in Endgame. Of course, Scooby said that Meghan and Harry didn't help him with the book, but we know better. Much of the information that was written in that book could only have come from Meghan and Harry themselves or people authorized to speak on their behalf. At this point, Endgame has now been out for a couple of months nearly, and what has become clear is that nobody really cares about what is in that book except for those names that were revealed in the Dutch translation. According to Jack Royston, speaking for the Royal Report, this is still very much a live issue in people's imaginations. Of course, he's referring to the discussions around the royal family and racism. He said, quote, it was the big take-home from the Oprah Winfrey interview. Whatever Harry and Meghan might now say about whether they didn't intend that, it was the biggest take-home from the Oprah Winfrey interview, and it always will be. This will always be the issue from the Oprah interview, and the Oprah interview will always trump the other things that Harry and Meghan do in years to come. And I agree with him. Now, normally Jack Royston is more of a Sussex supporter than I consider myself to be, but lately it seems like he's changing. It seems like he's seeing them for who they really are. Now, as for this claim that it's going to follow Harry and Meghan for years to come, he's right. And Harry even tried to backpedal on this, remember? When he was doing interviews promoting Spare, he claimed that he and Meghan never said the family was racist, that the media spun it like that, but that's not what they tried to say. Well, I mean, come on. You only have to listen to the interview to know. That's exactly what Harry and Meghan were trying to say, or at least Meghan. I think that Harry was a little uncomfortable with the claim. You could see his body language in the interview, and he didn't look like he really supported what Meghan was saying. 
but he went along with it anyway, because I guess he has no choice. And the fact of the matter is, once something like that is said, it cannot be unsaid. No matter what Harry and Meghan try to do to take back that claim, it's never going to work. That interview is what people are going to remember. And I can only assume that privately, this interview showed Harry exactly what his family had been trying to tell him for years, that you have to be careful with what you say, that whenever you're going to say something publicly, you got to consider the repercussions. Obviously, Harry did not do that. Royston went on to say, when people look back, it will trump the Netflix documentary, and it will trump Harry's memoir, Harry's book Spare. And the reason it will trump those two things is because it came first. Because it came first, it's created the narrative. It created the drama, and it created the interest. It was the original manifestation of the Harry and Meghan perspective, and this was its centerpiece. I think this point that Jack Royston is making is a very good point indeed, and I don't think it's one that Harry and Meghan seem to understand, or at least not Meghan. At this point, I think Harry just wants to lay low. He doesn't want the attention anymore. I think he's perfectly happy with their careers falling apart in Hollywood because he knows he's got his family to fall back on. Meghan, on the other hand, is becoming desperate. She's panicking right now. I think Meghan can feel Harry slipping away from her, and so she's desperate to try to reinvent herself before they're divorced. She has to know that after the divorce is finalized, she'll maybe be able to write a book, and that might be able to sell because people will want to know the gossip about what it was like living with Harry. But after that, no. She has no career opportunities. She's never going to be a star in Hollywood. She's never going to be a director or a producer. Those dreams she needs to give up ASAP. But this is something that was wholly predictable. I mean, Harry and Meghan, when they built their brand on whining about past events, should have realized that that was no way forward. In the future, what were they going to rely upon? In the future, when the royal family stopped talking to them, which was inevitable and has already happened, what were they going to be able to sell? I mean, the only thing they have made money on is trashing the royal family and telling lies about their experiences as working royals. At the end of the day, yeah, I brought them in some money, but not enough to keep them going indefinitely. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. In the world we live in today, we need positive influences. We need inspiration. We don't need a couple of entitled, privileged brats whining about perceived slights that just aren't that big of a deal. At the end of the day, Harry and Meghan thought that their claims were going to make such a splash that everybody was going to turn on the royal family because King Charles dared to wonder what his grandchild might end up looking like before he was born. Well, now we see. Most people sided with the royal family. Most people understand that it's not wrong to question what a baby might look like if the baby's going to take after the mother or the father more. We know that was all the king meant. The king is not a racist person. Nobody's going to believe that the king actually said something awful about Archificial, and especially not when Meghan's telling us this, because we know that she's a liar. So Harry and Meghan really should have thought about that before. But see, they couldn't, because Meghan is a narcissist. Meghan simply cannot consider how people are going to react to her claims or what she's doing, because she can't relate to people. That's one of her biggest problems. She has no empathy. She has no compassion. There's something missing inside of her. Because of Megan's personality disorder or disorders, she can't experience these high vibration emotions like love and joy and, and the contentment that goes along with a life well lived. So as far as I can see, Meghan Markle is doomed. She's always going to be miserable. She's always going to be grasping for something that's just out of reach. She's never going to be satisfied. And so I hope that Harry can go back to his family and find some kind of peace eventually. But Meghan Markle, she never will. And you, what do you think? Do you think looking back that Harry and Meghan had any chance of success after that Oprah Winfrey interview? Please let me know your thoughts below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and share with any of your family or friends who would enjoy it too. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely weekend and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.